Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Seiko Starcraft here. Pro replay. We have Botvinik. Not exactly sure. The thing is, my first game I've cast of his. Up against Tfal. This guy is a lot of fun to watch. Zerg player. Excited about this. King Zhejiang Station. Also creates some really, really interesting replays on it. We'll see what we get out of it. I'm going to speed it up at the beginning because uh, I can. You're going to have to deal with that. Zerg versus Terran. My favorite matchup. And this map generally turns into the really crazy games for, you know, Zerg versus Protoss and that late game Swarm Host style play. It just creates such interesting matchups with this, you know, center base here that just comes into a really good third that really attacks the other person's third. We'll see what kind of tricks people have up their sleeve. A little bit of a later gas on this side here. It shouldn't really set behind his Reaper too much. And we are going to have a pool first on this side. A little bit of a safer opening. Which I think makes sense. I do it anyways just because I believe in safer openings and safer play. Mm. Having a lighthouse craft beer. Fizzguard 150 Bavarian Lager. It is very Bavarian tasting. It tastes like much Germany. Mm. Yes. Reaper is on the way. Gonna be heading straight across here to see what's going on. Well, not too much else to talk about. He's going speedless as an opening. Which is fine. I mean, I don't have too many problems with that. Get out that extra huge drone count and use the queens to keep everything safe. I do really like getting out speed super fast. Just because you can catch people with opportunities. Sometimes the Terran player just expects Zerg players to just macro until they're blue in the face. But I've tried a few games where if you... Uh, Put in a little bit of extra effort. Use that speed earlier on. You can actually really like deny expansions and uh, pick off workers. Take care of small groups of units. Makes it very interesting. Behind this, we do have a reactor going down just before the command center starts. Pump out a few marines. Still no gas out of our Zerg player. He's expecting that the uh, the Reaper would come in on this side, but he does scout it now on the other place. He can't get too far off creep against it, in case it does happen to just potentially pick off a worker. The important thing he should see at this point, though, is no gas. I don't know if he completely scouted both extractors or not, but it's very telling. If there's no gas, you can just keep building Reapers and get that Hellion pressure out even sooner. It's that speed that really dictates when you got to fall back from these uh, from these Reapers. Surprised he hasn't put an overlord over here just for the uh, sake of being able to see it. <coughs> but I expect the pro players really understand exactly where they want their first overlords to go. Generally I know where my first two or three overlords are going to go, but uh, not so much everything else. Command center about to finish up. Factory's already in position. Starport's on the way. We'll see if we're going to have our tech lab go down on here for some banshees or not. Zerg player starting to build up a bit of money here, thinking he really wants to go for a third hatcher pretty soon, but he's getting saturated up really well on just the two bases he's on. Let's see if this. Oh, he's going to say he's going to. He is going to spot it, unfortunately. I'd probably send that drone home and uh, pick another one, but he's just going to come and expand up here as his third, which is quite interesting. Little bit. Uh, a little bit more vulnerable. Close your leg in the beginning. First couple of Hellions will see the timing of that there third hatch. Oh no, come back you mouse. He's going to try to wall off a little bit more at the front here just to make sure he doesn't have speed and zerglings and roaches out yet. So a few Hellions can really just rip you apart with a couple of good shots. So you got to be very careful about that. I've seen a lot of Zerg players try to be a little bit greedy with their play, you know, no wall off, don't worry about the speed, and then before you know it, a couple of big shots and you're down, you know, 8, 10 workers. We did not have the 3 command center opening here out of our Terran player, so we should be in a position to put on a lot of early pressure. And he actually made another reactor here for this starport, which is very strange to me at this stage. It's a little bit early for that. I'm expecting to see a barracks go down on there pretty soon. Um, but this is a kind of a wonky opening for Botvinik. When I watch a lot of pro replays, you're going to see that the starport goes down early in order to support something. Like, it's going to go support a drop. 
or you know some widow mines or something else to really make use of this building as we can see it's sitting there not necessarily getting anything done yet oh there's this medevac I was about to say where's everything we did get some roaches out to save that base but a nice drop in the mineral line we'll see what kind of actual damage you can get here focuses is down the weaker hellion that one hellion's friggin moonwalking between mineral patches that was sick Roaches will clean this up. Shoot him in the face. There you go. So he does get that hatch, but I'm just trying to think of what cost really did that come at. Terran players lost a little bit more, but denying that third hatch is pretty important. Looks like another one's going to go down here pretty quick. We do finally get that command center wrapping up pretty soon and more barracks on the way. But he doesn't really have anything back at home to defend against these roaches. Just a constant stream heading across there now. Some larvae, sometimes it's nice to use those up before they explode. One tank is out. It looks like that's going to be enough for these marauders to drive back this push. Sometimes this looks like a waste, like, okay, I have these roaches, now I can't use them. But they do really help in the early stages to deny these small attacks you might see from Hellions or Marine Drops. Roaches are beefy against just what any type of early game Terran harassment you can find. Now it's just a matter of uh, what do you go in for the late game here. And because he's going up against Bio, did he do a full scout yet? Neither player really knows what the other player is doing at this point here. Hydralis Den. So it's going to be Roach Hydra here up against what he doesn't know is Bio, but he might be able to assume. Extra, extra Bio. Double upgrades. We should be seeing the army go down pretty soon. I do like the one tank. I'd encourage Terran players to do that. Even if you don't plan on making a lot of tanks. Having out a couple of tanks in the early game really will shut down any of the big roach or even baneling bus play that is so popular right now. Because it's almost free wins for Zerg players if a Terran player doesn't make a few units earlier on. Matavac's going to boost it over. There's nothing in position here to defend this base. There's the roaches finally coming in. He's killed seven workers so far, and I mean, that's that's alright. I mean, it's not huge or anything like that, but it's at least keeping the Zerg player on his toes. Getting some pretty alright creep spread here. I'm pretty happy with the way that's going. So, so important, particularly with Roach Hydra as well. You really want to be staying as maneuverable as possible against this really agile bio army that he's going to be facing here fairly soon. He's moving up into those extra gases. Very, very important for a very gas-intensive composition. He's going to be having the starport for the medevacs. Still making more tanks and marauders with upgrades. Very heavy on the gas. If you're going very marine heavy, sometimes you don't need to be focusing so quickly on all that gas. But in this case, very important. Hydralisk range. The groove spines are finished. We'll see if he starts that speed pretty soon here. Plus two attack wrapping up pretty soon. Plus two armor is not started yet. You see both these players doing a really good job at keeping their spending going. They're not banking up a lot of money, but when you see this giant, giant explosion of uh, supply right here for Tfal, and I've seen his games like this before where he just tries to overwhelm. This is a lot of bio with tank support here. Very clumped up Zerg play. Looks like he might just bust through it, but it's going to be very expensive. He's lost over 40 supply already. Just get himself a couple of medevacs, all the tanks. And he might be able to stop this third at least, but that's going to be about as far as this goes, I would have to imagine. That queen was a little bit out of position there. I think he should be sending at least a couple of roaches into that mineral line if he's uh, moving back and forth on these different pieces. Cleaning up some of his reinforcements. Bodvinik is doing what he can, but he has lost this base. If he had a Hydra or two of here, he might be able to get that burning at least. He's going to keep the pressure on. Tfel's lost a lot of supply here, but it looks like he's finally going to break through this. His bio's rallied a little bit of the wrong spot. He's going to pull the SCVs, uh, but that tank goes down, and yeah, that is essentially going to be GG. Pretty good game out of Tfel there. Shows that power of just overwhelming Roach Hydra, even though the positioning and the attack angles didn't favor him. 
his economy, even on three bases, just the great macro play. No macro hatches either. That's kind of the beauty. If you're playing Zergling Baneling, you need all those macro hatches to be able to spend the larva to be able to get enough units out. But Roach Hydra is pretty beefy, uh, even with just three hatches there. Sigma Starcraft, thanks everybody for watching. We'll talk with you soon.